morning gorgeous people and here well it's early I'm up it's about five o'clock in the morning it's not even light outside yet don't know what I'm gonna do today it is Sunday and uh, I'm not working today so um, I don't know I'm gonna see what kind of trouble I can get into I feel like cooking something yeah, I think I need to cook something one thing I can tell you for sure is that having this heater in here is a complete game changer. I swear. I don't know what I would do without it, really. I mean, I would be suffering. It's only got one side lit because I have it on the low setting, and that's plenty usually. And it keeps this fan so nice and warm and toasty and inviting. I just love it. So thank you, neighbor Anne. You are the best. Phew, look at all that frost. Looks like a winter wonderland out there. It's everywhere. It's on the ground. Yeah, so I guess Tennessee is pretty much like Ohio in the winter. <laughs> Look at my fire pit. I love to be able to see myself start a fire in this freezing cold weather right now. I'm going to need some gasoline or something. <laughs> but you know what? It's kind of pretty. My weeds encased in crystals. Ice. This is what I wake up to every day. Well, not every day. It's this frosty, but I just get to look out there and see nothing but trees. I just love it. Okay, I'm not going to open my window, but every morning I get to see this too. Rudy the rooster comes by, and if I open the window, Betty's going to be able to hear him scratching around and I am betting that just very close by is the mommy chicken and the baby chicken but I'm gonna see how close Rudy's gonna get let's just see he hears me talking I'm gonna be quiet there you go Rudy it's coming even closer well gonna go out of sight in a minute let's see if he comes over to my window Told ya. Mama and baby chicken are right there, right along with the rooster. The rooster watches closely over because that turkey comes out this way every now and again. It was out yesterday. There's a blue tarp that's all dirty that I had spread out and I hoped that the rain would wash it off, but it didn't, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. Yep, they just come over here and graze. Graze on my land. There's my lot number. I love these chickens. Today I've decided to make salmon patties. Here are the ingredients. Of course, a can of salmon, uh, dehydrated onions, or you can use minced onions, onion flakes, an egg, a jalapeno pepper, and some crackers and some salt. And basically, that's all you need. Next, you're going to want to crack your egg into a pan or a bowl. I use a pan because I don't have a bowl. Make sure you beat it up really nicely until it's all nice and mixed. Now you crumble up your saltine crackers. I use 10 to be exact for this recipe. Try and crumble them up to the smallest, tiniest pieces you can get them and just keep smooshing them and cracking them. Now it's time for the jalapeno pepper. Dice it as small as you can get it and just add it to your bowl or your pot in my case and get them all in there. Add about a tablespoon of dehydrated onions or minced onions, onion powder. Add a dash of salt. Then stir it up and make sure that all of the crackers are nice and wet with the egg and that the jalapeno peppers are evenly distributed. Drain as much of the liquid out of the can of salmon as you can. Then I like to dump the salmon onto a plate and this is what it looks like when it comes out of the can. Some people don't do this, but I take the skin off and I kind of go through and see if there's any bones that are not soft and I take them out. Add the salmon to your pot or your pan and I just like to take my hands and sprinkle it in there just to make sure there's no yucky stuff in there when it goes into the pot. Mix it all up, make sure all the ingredients are evenly distributed. This is what it looks like after it's all mixed. I like to let it sit now and rest for a little while, let the ingredients absorb. Form them into little balls, then flatten them out into little patties. I made four, but you could probably make five out of this. I'm cooking these in olive oil. Preheat your pan and then put the patties carefully down in, spaced as well as possible so they don't like stick to each other. 
and then you'll let them cook for about two minutes on this first side. Flip them over, then let them cook for about another two to two and a half minutes on this side. And these are essentially done. I've gone ahead and turned off the flame and because the cast iron skillet will continue to let them cook a little bit on the underside. Mmm, don't these look good plated up? Perfectly done, perfectly browned, cooked for about five minutes, two and a half minutes on each side, so let's see how they taste. All right, crunchy, crunchy crust. Perfectly done in the center. And, oh, it is just, these are amazing. A nice little bite to them, but not too spicy. Crunchy on the outside, cooked perfectly on the inside. Oh my goodness, here, let me see if I can let you take a look. Get, get, give you an idea of what the inside looks like, kind of hard. My filming's not that good, but delicious, guys. The This recipe is perfect. It's one I'm gonna use again and again, and I made it up all by myself. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. Ooh, I got an ouchie. Look who's come back to visit me. Oh my goodness. Yep. I wonder where Rudy is. Where's Rudy? These chickens are welcome on my property anytime they want. There he is. I knew he wasn't going to be too far behind. Oh, of course, Betty has to get in on the action. Oh my goodness. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.